Hello, everybody. Welcome to the revolution will not be televised. It will be streamed. This is where we have the conversation about life and leadership in the digital age. I'm Dr. Ricky Allman, along with my fellow host, uh, the Reverend Stephen J. Thurston Deuces. And uh, we, got uh, we got some amazing some minds, minds here with us today. today. Uh, uh, doing the doing intro, the control, if you heard somebody, somebody talking, talking, that was uh, uh, my brother talking, talking to his daughter, 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 trying to get trying people to get together. together. So uh, <laughs> that that's the that's wonders the of live stream. Of live stream. Just like right now, I've got an echo that I've never before. Figured this out. Uh, again, the wonders of live streaming. You never know what to expect. Uh, but we're glad to be here. I'm going to figure out where this echo is coming from in a minute. Uh, but Stephen, can you tell them who this show is for before you introduce our guests? For sure. As we enter our 30th week. Man, of oh, hold on, hold on. We've been doing this for 30 weeks. 30 weeks, sir. 30 for, weeks. For free. Giving out valuable content. Cooking people up for free. Okay, so let's, let's put them out of their misery. Let's let them know we got all pastors on today. This show is really about an offering, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> you no, know, whatever this, preachers get together, there's got to be an offering involved. No, nah, we're just kidding. But there's man, no offering in. We're not selling cloths, no. <laughs> water, press shawls, nothing. We just dropping nuggets <laughs> that will. We're just trying to help you to maximize your potential, mobilize your purpose, and multiply your productivity. So if you're an educator, social media influencer, pastor, executive, uh, entrepreneur, Lottie Dottie and everybody, this is who this content, this platform is for. And if you're getting something out of it, you need to invite more people over into our private Facebook group. Not here. I just saw it down here. Rick is working his piece. Man, I, this this is what happens when you're out of town and you're away from all the stuff you're used to. So this is this is the twilight zone. In 30 weeks, this is the first week that I'm away and doing this show. So God help us today. Thank you all for your patience. So Stephen, if you haven't already, because I couldn't hear you for about 30 seconds, please introduce uh, the guest that we have with us today. Good. Well, let's roll. Let's jump into this thing, man. I'm ready. So, so, we, so as, as we're looking at life, life has shifted. Uh, people are not going back to the normal context in which we've come from. So if you're still thinking that, you're disillusioned. I'm going to need you to get off the drugs you're on and step into the reality of things, especially those who serve in church ministry. Church, as we knew it, is gone. It stayed. I feel resurrection on the third day. <clears throat> Things have totally shifted. And I've got some guests. We've got some guests today. Uh, we're we're going to pick their brain, allow them to serve as, as a contextualized surgeon to help us to cut through uh, what's happening, what should be happening, and what they've been doing to serve as effective mouthpieces in this, to serve in present age. Uh, an age that we need, an age region, an age that just slapped us upside the head around about February. Uh, so we, we want to hear from you guys. Pastor Stores, what is it that you've been doing? What is it that you have to change and adjust as we've shifted into this new place called a pandemic as it relates to pastoring to serve as present age?
but to also learn and to grow and to, to be sharp and to be challenged. So again, it's an honor just to, to hang out with the younger guys. <laughs> <laughs> Since I'm the old dude on the platform, man. <laughs> uh, well, when I when I think about uh, what's going on, I, I wanna I wanna put a frame around it. And sure. putting a frame around it allows it to make sense as to how we're actually executing. So we when we look at what's going on and we taking it straight out of scripture being a uh, modern day son of Issachar, we call them sons and daughters of Issachar, mm-hmm. the people who understood the signs, the discerners of the signs. And as the text says in Second Chronicles, knew what Israel ought to do. Those who have that ability to keep their finger on the pulse of the moment and then plot a strategy to effectively look at it. So when COVID hit, prior to that, we have been praying and sensing, okay, God, where would the next wave? And the reason we went that route is because we don't create the wave. We swim and ride the wave God creates. So in looking at COVID, uh, it's not just another, for us, a get uh, season, a get-through moment. Uh, when we look at COVID and, 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 and how we framed it in discerning what's going on, when you have a, a blizzard versus a climate ch- change, being in the city of Chicago, I'm fully aware of blizzards and fully aware that it's a short-term incident that may require us to adapt you know, our lives for a short period of time. We know at some point that that blizzard is going to be over, but when COVID hit, I think we are been ushered into a new age where there's a significant and sustained change over a long period of time from where we are and where we're going. Um, certainly is nowhere near where we've come from. So the first shift, of course, was the mindset shift, understanding that this is not something we get through. This is something that we lead through. And that leading through it requires some strategic shifts uh, in and around our church. First and foremost being that having that ability to pivot. Uh, when we look at ministry today, where we're going, it's platform-based. Uh, when you think about what's happening in the world, uh, the largest taxi company, uh, Uber, does not own vehicles. Uh, the largest uh, hotel or uh, Airbnb does not own property. And in looking at those industries, one word comes to mind, disruption. So discerning the times, Understanding we're going into a long, sustained season of change, and then understanding that change through disruption. The first goal was to help educate our leadership team on how to pivot. So I can talk a little bit more about strategy and how we did it a little bit, but I wanted to put the frame around what precipitated the execution. Sure. Pastor Stephen, before you move forward, I, I want I want to talk to something right quick, Pastor Stores. Uh, you like myself, like Stephen, like Ellis, uh, who represent multiple generations of pastors and leaders. November, I was just thinking about it the other day. I turn forty eight next month, and it's crazy. I'll be at the same time celebrating. 37 years of preaching and 27 years of pastoring. So I was like, man, I'm old in dog years. And so if you think back to our fathers and those that come before them, what do you say to the pastor who says, well, you know, stores, I've got an unchanging God. He's the same yesterday, today and forever. And I know we're in pandemic and I know we're in this digital ecosystem, but stores, I just don't believe that's how we have to do it. I want to extend your framework a little bit <laughs> and, and, and ask you to speak to that individual 
who, and there's no other way to say it, who may just be stuck in, in their paradigm, but yet they've got a constituency and a congregation <laughs> that still needs to be fed in this new paradigm. Speak to that person and talk to that pastor about what they need to do, because it may not always be changing them, <laughs> but what they can do with what they have around them and available to them to be able to effectively minister to those in this time. Jesus never said how you do it. <laughs> yeah. Two different, two different distinct instances. Fast forward to Great Commission. Go therefore and make disciples, baptizing them, teaching them to obey, etc. Jesus said, this is what we do. He never wrapped a frame or a model around. So going forward in, in, in this season, we have to keep our finger on the pulse of the moment and do what Jesus said, the mission, because Jesus understood that methods would come and go. Strategies right. would come and go. And don't get married to the strategy, but stay true to the, miss, the mission, the essence of the mission. That's good. Well, yes, sir. <laughs> So, Bill, what what has been some of your strategy um, shifting your people? <clears throat> Again, as Ricky just alluded to, you've got people there who have been accustomed to how your dad did it and how your dad did it for so long and did it so well his way. And they may have that mindset, if it ain't broke, don't break it. Don't touch it. So what have been some of your strategies to shift your people and lead your people uh, towards success in this space for them? So, um, thank you, gentlemen, and Pastor, I love how you frame that, um, looking at the strategies. Uh, part of, part of, of, of my strategy and a snapshot has been when I came in very directly to what you just said, we're all coming behind, you know, in our lineage and our legacies that we have to now establish on our own. So it's the fourth pastor of an, an, an almost 100-year-old fundamental apostolic Pentecostal church. Um, so for me, my strategy started four years ago when I came in the door. Um, number one, it was like you just said, I don't do it like my father does it. And I always say it like this. My daddy is your favorite preacher's favorite preacher, you know, in our context and matrix where we come from. But I, I don't I don't do that like that <laughs> so it was getting the entire ministry now to see that we now have to shift from where we were which was at the time my father was uh, right at 75 when he retired my father didn't didn't text you know he 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 was sticking with the flip phone because i just need to talk and keep going well, and, you know, and I'm coming in saying I'm not the most tech savvy guy or tech advanced guy, but we at least need to start moving into, you know, it's no longer about um, we appreciate the wonderful relationship we had with the AM radio station, but uh, we're now over into the digital realm now. And so what happened for me to fast forward that is um, even last year, the theme that, that God had given me for the entire year to share with the church was to reset. And that's to reset from things that no longer served our purpose and now reset ourselves to move forward with the things that we need uh, to move forward in God. Well, I didn't know that on March 
uh, you know, the beginning of March, the pandemic was going to hit. And on March 15th, that was going to be the last time we were in church. And now, whereas I was trying to use uh, the timing and the discernment and the wisdom of God, because when you take over a ministry, you know, it's a it's not a speedboat, right? It's a cruise ship. Uh, you've got to turn the herd far and wide. You've got to take your time, son. You know, <laughs> it's five to seven years before they even let you become their pastor. You've got to wait out the storm and you've got to. Well, I'm going to be honest. I came in and said, I ain't got time to wait. You know, I, I didn't I didn't get started as a, as a young pastor. I came in approaching 40 and getting started in the pastorate. So um, to say that now is the pandemic has just put us in the position to say, Now we've just got to mash the gas on our focus. And I was trying to wait until we got to our 100th year celebration, which will be in 2023, to do all of this kind of foray into the new way. And, you know, Uh, but no, you know, God mashed the gas on that. So now we've got to reset. And so for us, that means uh, we had to move from being a church that was known as when I came here. One pastor asked me in the city, we had a very great conversation and he said, We knew your dad and what he was going to do when he showed up. He told you, I'm Bishop E and I've been set free. (laughs) Now, who are you? What are you going to (laughs) do? When we were coming to Morgan Park, we knew we were coming to have church. It was broadcast and first Sunday, you know, and, but now you're here. What are you going to do? And so now we're here. (laughs) And so that conversation now becomes for me, it's no longer about what we used to do. The only question that we can entertain right now And the query to investigate is where do we go from here? And so now for us intentionally, it's been shifting from just being a church that was known for for coming and having the spiritual vigor to now being a church that's known to, we still have the spiritual vigor, but now that looks like uh, shifting our focus now to serving the community that we're in. Because while at one time we could, you know, put out a flyer and have an announcement on the radio and a thousand people show up at the church because you're the hot spot. Well, now there are new hot spots, and now there are no hot spots. How about that? We're all at home, and we're all trying to figure out what is it going to look like when we return. So for us, it's strategically being focused now on the Morgan Park neighborhood and the community. Case in point, share this message. Tell somebody tomorrow. We're having an outdoor service, pop-up outdoor service, and we're giving away groceries. Services at 11. We've got about 125 boxes of groceries to give away at 12. So come out for that. We'll still have a shout good time. We'll feed you with the word, and then we'll send you out with some food to eat on the way. All right, so there you go. That's our strategy. You, you, you know what's so powerful about this? And Stephen, you and I have talked about this several times. But, but I think what's so powerful about this time is the fluidity of ministry. To, to me, ministry is now looking like what I believe was intended by the apostles in the first century church. I don't mean to create a theological framework, but we are preachers here. So it, it's who we are. And and to something that you said, Clarence, especially in the black church, and Bill, I just heard you allude to it. This whole concept of worship now is being not reduced, but it's being deconstructed to its least common denominator. Because now we don't have the luxury of the B3 organ. Uh, you get what I'm saying? We don't have the luxury of the choir in the choir stand. Uh, and, and I hope nobody's trying that because there's no way you're socially distancing uh, <laughs> if you got a full row choir up there, right? So we're, we're really learning now what God intended when he said, they that worship me must worship in spirit and truth. Uh, Clarence, I want you to unpack that a little bit more. Let's talk about our liturgy. Let's talk about our approach. Uh, When Stephen told me about you, I had the opportunity uh, to go back and watch some of your Sunday uh, services, quite provocative indeed, Uh, where there's no praise team, where there's no choir, there ain't no deacon doing uh, consecration prayer. But sir, when you get through, (laughs) after you put all your your points on the side, uh, and you're like, okay, is this CNN? Is this MSN? What what, what am I? 
And uh, when you get through dissecting and walking through, it is quite a compelling experience. So speak a bit, if you will, about what worship is. And Billy, when he finishes, you just tag team. And uh, cause you and I have had this conversation, so I'm putting you on the spot uh, and talk about what that means, particularly in the context of the black church. Man, you, um, you nailed it um, pretty much as the setup, man. You set the ball. I mean, you teed it up high for me. All golfers know what yes, sir. that means and how it feels. You teed it up high, brother. <laughs> well, I, I, I know you are an avid golfer, so I know who I'm talking to. <laughs> yes, sir. I thank you. You teed it up well. Yes, sir. Thank you. You, you used the word, and when you <clears throat> said it, man, something leaped in my spirit. Mm. You said worship deconstructed. And one of the things that I highly believe that in the midst of the deconstruction, there's also decentralization, where it is no longer focused on uh, who's on the platform or who's the worship leader or worship leaders, the choir director, etc. which again goes back to Jesus saying, uh, they that worship must worship in spirit and in truth. So what happens when the model is removed and you're left there to get vertical to play to that audience of one? So in the midst of COVID decentralizing the church, worship is now in the hands of that person in the household, maybe the head of the household. Uh, those who are watching are now taking full ownership uh, of their purpose and I don't know what happened to, to my video. I don't know. That's weird. That, that's weird right there. Let me. Uh, Something doesn't want us to talk today, but we're yeah, going to keep talk about worship. Keep man. talking. We can hear you. <laughs> but you can hear me. Okay. We can, it's got you in the matrix, but you all right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Let me uh, take that off. And, yeah. Uh, keep talking. To it, keep man. talking. So, yeah. Think about this. And now that it has been removed, the actual focus on worship being person driven it is now believer driven it's it's centric and central to the believer so now where do we go how do we continue to play to that audience of one and so now worship is now brought back into the home of each and every person as opposed to it being focused primarily on who's on the platform and in addition to that decentralization now Imagine that father in his home leading worship. It's not wrapped around pomp and circumstance. It's wrapped around authenticity, truth, and honor. Man, you just... just she, go ahead, Stephen. I, I, he just so smooth. Yeah, man. but he just said, you're right. <laughs> you just did a whole commentary on worship. <laughs> because, here, because here's the thing, Clarence, that I think is so critical. What's so critical is not only has it become believer centered, but I feel like it's finally become Christocentric again Be because it, it appeared that worship pre pandemic, like you said, was had become a little iconoclastic. Can we say it that way and be nice about it? <laughs> you, you know, it, it was centering on personalities. Yeah. Uh, yeah, sure. and, and now it's really centered back on that vertical, like you said, that audience of one with the believer uh, and, and their God. Um, this decentralization, uh, Bill, I need you to carry this because you've talked about this and then I'm volleying back to my, my fellow host and he can carry it to the end. But talk about this decentralization and the fact that what we call the house of God, you know, that building. I'm going to the house. Never mind the Bible said our bodies are the temples of the Holy Ghost. Never mind the Bible says that God doesn't dwell in temples made with hands. I have literally, now nah, never mind, I can't say it. I'm going to get in trouble. Stephen, you know where I was about to go, and you were going to let me go there. That's shame on you for letting me go there. You were going <laughs> to, Bill, before I get in trouble, talk to us, please. Uh, Clarence has just given you a, oh Lord, a Miami Heat alley-oop from last night. 
Uh, you know, I'm going for the Lakers, but Miami is doing their thing. Uh, he just gave you an alley -oop. Talk about this decentralization of what we know as the institutional church. Pastor Stowers was so brilliant. Right. Um, <laughs> in his in his sagacity and his seasoning. Right. He just gave um, us a so whole me, thesis. Yeah, let me be the, the, the kind of reckless older younger brother down here. With, okay. With, with Reverend Durston. <laughs> uh, well, so decentralizing, um, deconstructing, for me, it looks like this. Um, uh, I'm getting ready to talk about, I'm, been, I'm talking about the Good Samaritan, this series, Fix the Road, this month. Um, and in looking at studying about the Good Samaritan, just looking at the Samaritan history and that kind of thing, going back to Jesus meets the woman at the well. She's a Samaritan, and they get into a conversation about worship, right? Where are we going to? Where is it supposed to happen? Where's the proper place to do it? Because you do it in Jerusalem, but then we do it. You do it the, the colonial Jewish way. And then we do it the uh, fundamental Samaritan way. So what's going on here, Mr. Jesus? And Jesus is coming talking about a new way to do it. He says, well, there's coming a day. It's. Now, this is the conversation to establish the revelation of a day that's going to come when it doesn't matter where you worship. What's going to be important is the posture of your heart when you do worship. And so we found this place now. Well, like you just said, ain't no, ain't that you have no, you have no one to assist you in your intimacy now. Nope, nobody, don't get mad at me, but nope, if, if we've used this term in church, I hate it, sorry, you know, we get to adore and make love to Jesus with oh, our worship Lord. and all of these oh, colloquialisms Jesus. and yeah. pour out your love on him and, I mean, I get it, I, I understand it, there is some theology somewhere the, there that the people Bill, use to justify it. B Bill, you're saying that we have no spiritual KY jelly anymore. I'm saying oh, no oh Lord, here we go. Okay. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> yeah. That's what I'm oh, saying. Lord, there's, there's, Jesus. There's, there's nobody there to help you. No spiritual lubricant. Wow. The anointing or the oil or the lube that you need to enter. So we don't get to pull on the anointing anymore? No, it's not there. There's nobody Man. there saying, come on, do it, come on, help you. Y'all I mean, better you clap. Can watch some of the most wonderful programs, and now it's the Netflix for church, and there's some amazing worship moments from everybody. I get right. that. But for those of us that we used to help facilitate this for the people, and now that it's not there, I have I, I've had to be honest about this myself to say, in my short years of ministry and even shorter time of pastoring. Have I really been helping the people know how to get to God for themselves? Or have I just been helping to perpetuate the program that has been continuing to anesthetize them from really dealing with the true reality of what they're going through? Okay, repeat that. Repeat that whole statement right there. One I, more I again. By, by, I, that was revelation. I don't know. It just came No. Out. But <laughs> are we but are we are we really helping people go? people get to know God for right. themselves. Yes. This this is a personal testimony and I'll keep it going because my worship had to become personal mm. because I knew what to do in church. I played I in, 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 uh, played instruments and helped to facilitate the program and we are worship leaders in every setting we get into. But for me, I found my true personal worship when I built my relationship with God during a season where I was outside of the church. Wow. So the pandemic really is a blessing for me because my relationship with God does better when I'm away from having to deal with the uh, responsibility of the call. And so now to say that it also makes it even more important because now I've got to have my own personal worship time so that I can be prepared to now deal with whatever we have to deal with in a unfamiliar territory as it relates to leading God's people. I'm out. 
like that. Okay. Yeah, that's real good, sir. Yeah. As we move to close this thing out, this is good. Rick, we'll have to continue this conversation. Oh, this is, there will be a part two. Yeah, got to. Yeah, there's a part two of this already. Because the end, <laughs> look, I hate to go churchy, but the enemy didn't want this one today. There's a part two to this. Yeah. So, Bill and Clarence, you all talked about newness. So let me throw this. It's going to be a two-part question. What do we do with the building? That's good. That's, that's question number one. What should we do with the building? Question number two, if there's a leader that's tuned in today that's just kind of lost in terms of their creativity, they've hit a block, and they just need something kind of innovative to infuse into their work, give them a suggestion, an idea that could illuminate the path for them, uh, something that's going to take them totally outside of their context, outside of their comfort zone, that they can try to kind of push this thing forward and remain current with where we are and where we're moving. I want to go first so Pastor can close. Wow. Okay. <laughs> Quick. Here's, 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 here's my posit on buildings. If you are carrying a significant mortgage, turn your church into a community center. Learn how to turn your building into a position where it can generate revenue. For the creative people, uh, I'm, I'm challenging that creativity. I'm going to just say it. YouTube is amazing. It'll teach you anything you need to know because it ain't no church development conferences and leadership conferences going on and church growth conferences going on right now. So YouTube will help stimulate your creativity. And also, last but not least, talk to the kids. Find out what the young people like, what's hot, the colors, the, the, the schemes, the, all of that, because in this virtual space, they, they, they are born into it. So let wow. them start leading. And y'all wrong. That's, like, that's how y'all do the old guy. That's how y'all do the old guy. <laughs> first, of all, first of all, we need to see your birth certificate, stores. We need to see a birth certificate. Don't come in here with this old stuff. You looking as young as all of us. Stop playing. Oh, right. Man. Oh, man. I, you know, I, I know you've got children uh, that have graduated from college. We know, but don't come in here with that. <laughs> That's why we're doing you like this, because you're an imposter for the old people. There it is. Oh, I'm, I'm, hashtag imposter for the old people. I got it, man. I got it. Yes. Man, that's why I hang around you guys, man. Y'all keep me young, keep Good. me mind sharp, all of the above. And um, since I am an uh, imposter for the old people, you know we like to put frames around things uh, and, 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 and build that runway. Um, the building, wow, the building. And I'm, I'm, I'm probably about to lose um, the two or three people that finally found out who I am. They oh, probably wow. stopped liking me right about now. Um, I have some very radical views uh, when it comes to, to the building. And I don't think that we've really uh, stepped back to, to look at what we can do. Since we've been out of our building since March uh, 15th, uh, that hasn't stopped us from having pop-up experiences in facilities that are way more modern, way more efficient uh, than what we have. So I'm thinking buildings are going to have to be repurposed. Right. Uh, matter of fact, um, we sold our building. Sold it. Wow. Yeah, sold it. And um, yeah, pretty radical, isn't it? When did you sold do this? <laughs> Just signed a contract last week. Wow. So Congrats, good. man. Yes. Thank you very much. Bless you, Doc. Yes, sir. Sold it. And so now, um, again, we can have conversations about this because I definitely want to give my, my tip. Um, so the question now is, now that we are fully devoted, and that's why you see that hashtag Mars Hill Anywhere, we're fully devoted to our mission, and that is helping people find their way back to God, but yet fully digital meaning that we're now no longer restricted to 5916 West Lake Street. So therefore, we've turned our 
small groups, as I mentioned, decentralization, we've turned them now into microsites, meeting now in 15 different states. And I'll talk about that a little bit later. So for us, the building was our hindrance because it kept us locked into a locale. Now that that restriction is Pause right open, there, Clarence. Pause right there. Remember where you had Stephen. Here is their part two. The church gone wild. <laughs> no, no, seriously. That's part two. We're going to schedule it. But I wanted to get it out of my head and I want the world to hear it. So Bill and Store is coming back because the churches went wild in a good way. Continue, sir. I'm sorry for breaking hey, man, in. I love it. I love it. And I'll fast forward. Let me get on to No, I no go through it. Take and, your time. Um, right now, we're no longer restricted. And for a guy like me and my leadership team, that's dangerous because <laughs> we're no longer hindered by an anchor. Right. That anchor has been pulled up out of the, the ocean because that's what we're navigating on an ocean now. Mm -hmm. And that anchor is now in the boat. So wherever we decide to drop that anchor, becomes the spot for that moment. And think about how wow. Jesus did it. Wow. In Acts chapter 2, Acts 4, Acts 6, Acts 7, talks about how they filled up the city because they were not tied by anchors. Mm -hmm. They pulled up their anchors and went wherever they need to go. So for us, you give a person who has vision, match that with adaptive leaders, which I'm going to close on that, and then with resources, you know, our goal is to have 1,000 micro sites in 50 states in five years. And nice. we can't do that if we're pouring 70 to 80 percent of our money into anchors. And then my um, advice of one thing that you can take away, I'm huge on that. In COVID, you have three types of leaders. You have direct directional leaders where they take the same leadership approach to a situation not going to work. Then you have situational leaders where they adapt the leadership model to the situation that ain't going to work. Mm -hmm. Today we need adaptive leaders. These are the leaders who first observe, then they interpret, and then they put together a plan to execute. Because as things change quickly, <clears throat> then you have to be able to adapt right. quickly. So be adaptive rather than situational or direct. <laughs> yes, sir. I'm silent. <laughs> oh, that's all I got to say. All right. <laughs> we was giving that a moment to breathe. That was amazing. Absolutely. Thank so, you for your courage. Yes. Yeah, thank you, brothers. And um, again, it's out. Um, our leadership team knows about this, so it, this is nothing secret. Uh, I just announced it before I announced it publicly. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> but wow. it's no secret. Uh, yeah, we are building free, which to me is... Man, I'm not anchored. I'm not anchored to the west side of Chicago anymore. I'm fully digital, fully devoted, and you, thinking globally now. You're fully kingdom. If we wrap that theological concept around it, I won't get ahead of it, Ricky, but... No, but that's building. why we call this show Thy Kingdom Come. That's the reason yeah. we put this ta that tag on this show. Yes. Yeah, I've said in private, but I guess we've gone public with these conversations now but the buildings have become a problem. Um, Jesus never intended for his church to be in a building. Jesus established the church, we all preach it, on revelation. And upon a person's individual revelation, then you take and share that message. And if that message has helped you change your life, then you'll teach that message to somebody, which will then now make disciples or they'll follow that message and how you model that message, and then you'll start to perpetuate that. But but we we got into, I like how Dr. Dana Carson talks about it, but the five watersheds of religion and Christianity, and, and, and now Jesus, when Jesus comes back for the church, he's gonna look and say, what were y'all doing? 
And, and, and if we don't get it right now, then we're going to have to even talk about that whole coming back. Because what would he have to come back? What am I going to come back for? They just messed it up. I'm gonna, <laughs> we can rewrite the script. <laughs> Man. Man, this, this is rich conversation. <clears throat> and I think hopefully some pastor, some leader that's tuned in has been liberated, uh, has been freed from some of their chains as it relates to their thinking. They've broadened their scope, expanded their lexicon of uh, ideas and what can happen and what needs to happen for the church. So thank you, Bill. Thank you, Clarence, uh, for sharing your perspective, your insight today. For those of you who've tuned in, we really need you to share this information to get somebody else plugged in, some other leader, your pastor, tell them they need to plug into this so that they can be encouraged and inspired. And then what I need you to do as we close out, Bill and Clarence, I want you guys to come back. Tell the people where they can find you, where they can follow you. If you've got any books or resources that they can gain access to. Of course, on Thursdays, we're tuned in to Ricky Allman on YouTube. Uh, as he's dropping serious nuggets, you want to go to rickyallman.com. Buy everything that's dot on org. That's dot org. Dot org. I'm sorry. That's it. Buy everything on there that's for sale. Uh, bring Ricky in. He does virtual conferences, too. He does consultations. Bring him in. He's going to change the life of your organization, your ministry. Uh, Bill, what you got? Clarence, what you got? APCMorganPark.org is the website. Uh, Facebook Live, YouTube Live on Sunday at 11 a.m. And TNT on Tuesdays at 7.30. It's Tuesday night teaching, Tuesday night talks. We talk about the Bible and talk about spiritual truths. I'm going to have Ricky Allman as my special guest on this coming TNT. <laughs> this Tuesday night, we're going to talk about how our theology informs our politics on this Tuesday. Oh, God, well, help us. Good. Pray my strength, please. <laughs> oh, man, excellent. And following up, same here. Uh, we're streaming live every uh, Sunday at 1030 on Facebook at Mars Hill, Chicago. And then also simultaneously, simultaneously on YouTube at Clarence Stores TV. We also have our midweek, we call it The Gathering. And that's every Wednesday at, at 7, uh, 7 p.m. Stream both places. We also have um, our on-demand streaming, uh, sort of our Netflix-type uh, experience for people who want to catch it later in the week. And that's at Mars Hill online.tv uh, you can check that out of our messages as well so that's where we are and hopefully we can connect in some capacity and please make sure uh, you just drop some love off at the cash apps of Pastor Stout stores and Pastor Ellis just stop through encourage them uh, the churches literally went beyond the walls I mean that's that's almost without saying now. Uh, and I believe it's it's supernaturally intended that way. Stephen, you have the mirror moments movement. Uh, you, you talk about purposeful madness. Uh, you are challenging people uh, in relationships and in leadership uh, to not just think outside of the box, but think like there never was a box. Uh, I'll never forget, I was speaking in a leadership conference and after I got through speaking uh, stores, the, a pastor came to me. He said, uh, Dr. Allman, you know, man, this was so good. I enjoyed it. But I, I'm struggling with one thing. I said, what is it, sir? He said, I'm trying to get my people out of the box. I looked at him. I said, so who put them in it? And he started laughing. He said, I, I get it now. I was like, yeah, that's why you got to take home what you heard. <laughs> <laughs> to get them out of the box, you put them in. Well, that's what the mirror moment movement is uh, with Stephen Thurston. Go to stephenjthurston.com, register today, join that movement. He's on every Tuesday afternoon at 3 p.m. Uh, you don't want to miss it. Uh, he's got two books out, one that's in hard copy and digital uh, called Mirror Moments. Uh, the other book is digital called Unplugged. Uh, but connect to him. Uh, he's a consultant. He's a project manager. Anything that you're trying to get done, 
he can show you not only what to do, but how to do it. So make sure uh, that you stop by uh, his page, see what he's doing, and allow your life to be transformed. Thank you, gentlemen, for giving us texture and transformation. That's what happened today. No matter where a person is or a pastor is in their leadership journey, you all have shared something that allows them to hook in. And so, okay, that's what I needed to help me get to that next place. Uh, would you all be willing to come back again? Oh, absolutely. Please, yeah. please do. We, we, absolutely. Yeah, we would love to have you back. Well, Stephen, it's yours to take us out of here, man. Cool. Well, it's our desire that you would have an amazing day. Again, connect with us in the Facebook group. All you got to do is answer a couple of questions. We want to make sure we got the right people and not imposters in that space. Right. Answer those questions, get invited in, and then plug into all the resources that we have. Until next Saturday, y'all have an amazing day.